Lesson eight in module three is on using if-then moves in solving equations. Um, and let's talk about what those if-then moves mean. So basically, this is it. We can say if a number is added or subtracted, if I spell things right, to both sides of a true equation, so there's our if part, then the resulting equation is also true. Okay, so what do we mean by that? I can get this on one line here. Here's what we mean. If I, if this is a true statement, if a equals b, all right, again, those are symbols representing numbers. So if five equals five, if a equals six, whatever. Sorry, this is a B right here, okay? Then A plus C has to equal B plus C. So notice that if we add a number, because that C represents a number, a value, if we add it to both sides, then this is also true. If this is true, then this is true. The same thing can be said if a equals b, sorry, that's really sloppy, then a minus c has to equal b minus c, okay? So as long as we do it to both sides, which you've heard me say numerous times, it's staying equal, okay? So the same thing here, if I do another text box, and we say if a number is added or, nope, don't put added, is multiplied or divided to each side of a true equation, so it has to be true to start, then the resulting equation is also true. That would be easier if I typed it, then you guys could read it, right? Okay, so this is the same thing. Okay. If A equals B, then A times C has to equal B times C, okay? These two things will still be equal as long as we multiply both sides by C. And likewise, if A equals B, and we got to throw this little thing in here, and C C does not equal zero, okay? Because we cannot divide by zero. You cannot take something and break it into zero groups because you can't make anything and disappear. Then we'll say then A divided by C, this is not how we're writing divided, but just for room here, has to equal B divided by C, okay? So basically all these if-then moves are, <coughs> excuse me, is if it's true to begin with, as long as whatever you do to one side, you do the other, it stays true. So it says write three plus five equals eight as many true statements as you can using the if-then moves. Okay, so if I go three plus five and then I add two to it, well, three plus five is eight plus two is 10. Well, what happens if I add two to eight? You get 10. That's these if-then moves. So let's just do an example of each. If I go three plus five, and then I multiply that by two. So if I take this whole thing here and I multiply it by two, is that gonna equal eight times two? Well, three plus five is eight. Eight times two is 16. Eight times two is 16. Oh, how about subtracting? What if I go three plus five minus two? Is that gonna equal eight minus two? Yes, it is. Three plus five is eight. 8 minus 2, they're both going to equal 6. And one more. What if I take 3 plus 5, and now I'm going to write division how I normally write it, divided by with division bar 2. Is that going to equal 8 divided by 2? Well, yeah, 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay, so all the whole if-then thing means is if it's true to start with, as long as whatever you do to one side, do the other, add, subtract, multiply, divide, your resulting equation is true. Okay, so let's start putting all these equation things together.
So we have Julia, Keller, and Israel are volunteer firefighters. So on Saturday, the Volunteer Fire Department held its annual coin drop fundraiser at a streetlight. After one hour, Keller collected $42.50 more than Julia. Israel had collected 15 less than Keller. And all three firefighters collected $125.95 in total. So how much did he purchase and collect? Let's start with a tape diagram, something we've used in the past. Okay? So Keller collected $42.50 more than Julia. Okay? And Israel is kind of related to what Keller's going on. So I'm going to put Julia as my base. Okay? I'm going to take Julia here. Okay? And I'm going to cheat a little bit if I can figure this out with my shapes. And I'm going to say this rectangle right here represents Julia. Okay, for our tape diagram. Then we have Keller. Okay, and we know Keller collected $40.50 more than Julia. So, if I have this, hopefully almost the same size rectangle here. If that represents Julia, then we also have to add on that 4250. Sorry, I gotta remember how to correctly use my mouse here. And you guys probably have it done by now, right? <laughs> Quicker to draw it. I know. So, Keller has what Julia had plus an additional $42.50. Okay? Then we have Israel. Okay? Now, he's collected $15 less than Keller. Well, Keller. Has this has what Israel has what Keller has, but fifteen dollars less. So how could we figure out what fifteen dollars less is? Well, if we took the forty-two fifty and we subtracted fifteen, right? That would equal twenty-seven dollars and fifty cents. All right. So he doesn't have all of what. Keller has, he has $15 less, right? So we have that box and a smaller box here, right? And we know it's $27.50 inside that box. Okay, so Julia here, I'll call this J. That's how much money she has. Keller has whatever Julia has plus an additional forty-two fifty, and Israel has whatever Julia has plus an additional twenty-seven dollars fifty cents because it was fifteen less than what Keller had. Okay, and we know that all together, all three of these has to equal one hundred and twenty-five dollars and ninety-five cents. Okay, so to figure this out, kind of remember how we've done this before. We take our total here, right? And we're going to subtract off this and this. Okay, so $42.50 and $27.50, if I add that together, that works out to be $70. Okay, so I'm going to take $70 off of this whole thing. So $125.95 minus $70. And that works out to be $55.95. All right, so now I'm going to take that $55, just like we did the other day, okay. and we're going to divide it by three, and that works out to be $18.65. So what does that mean? Okay, it means, oh, no, undo, undo, don't want to do that. I just want to get rid of these J's in here, right? That means that Julia made $18.65. Keller made $18.65 plus the $42.50, right? So that would equal $61.15, sorry. 
And Israel is going to make what Julie made, the $18.65, plus the $27.50 here for a total of $46.50. Okay? So we get the three amounts they made using a tape diagram and then just subtracting off what was added on. So what operations were used to get their answer? Well, notice what we had to do. Okay, um, we added here, we subtracted, we divided. So what operations do we use? We use all of them, okay? Because we were adding this amount on, we subtracted. Because we were multiplying by the, you know, there's three of them, we divided. Okay, so we're, I'm not going to worry about that question right now. Just kind of understand what's going on there, okay? All right, now let's finish this off real quick. All right, so then the amount of money, there's the J comes in. Write an expression to represent the amount of money um, Keller collected. Well, you know what Keller collected? J. That was that box. Keller collected J. We know is $18.65, but we're going to pretend we don't know that yet. Kel I'm sorry, Julia. Oh, my goodness. Julia collected J. Keller then. Um, write amount of money that Keller collected. Well, if Julia collected J... Keller, remember, collected $42.50 more than that. Now we want to do Israel here, right? Well, remember, Israel collected $27.50 more. And we'll kind of put this above it. Remember, we added the $42.50 on, but then we subtracted the fifteen. dollars Okay, and that's how we got that $27.50. So using the expressions above, write an equation. All right. Well, we have Julia, which is J. We have Keller, which is J plus 42.50. And then we have Israel, which is J plus 27.50. Okay. Now, it says expressions. Okay, so here's Keller. Here, nope, I'm sorry. I'm going to get that wrong. Keep getting that wrong, right? Here's Julia. Here's Keller. And then here is Israel. Oops, and I'm going to spell it right again. Sorry. Okay, now to write an equation, what does that equal? It equals their total. And remember, that was $125.95. All right, let's finish this up real quick, guys. Stay with me for another minute here. Okay, solve the equation. I'm going to simplify this equation, okay? 1J, 1J, and 1J works out to be 3Js. Plus, if I add 4250 and 2750 together, remember that was at 70, and that equals 125.50 and 95 cents. So now, solving our equations, if we're solving for J, let's get rid of 70. It's adding 70, we subtract it. Remember, Whatever we do to one side, do the other. Because if this is true to start, then we can do those things. We have 3J that cancels equals, this would look familiar, $55.95. And then, remember, this is multiplying, so we undo that with dividing. And we're going to divide both sides by 3. And we get Julia, our J there, works out to be $18.65. And you guys have been patient enough, so you'll trust me. What we did just here is really just like what we did if I can use my mouse, up here. And we can figure out their totals just by plugging those back in. Okay? So we're moving on to solving equations. And what we're going to be doing is that whole whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. That keeps your equations true.